Today, I want to help you to understand what you need to sign with a major label like Warner. Come with me. Hi, I'm Sira. I was born in an artistic family and as an agent, manager and producer, I've worked for many years selling artists from all around the world. Today, I want to help you to become a full-time artist. Hi, I'm Suira and I'm here to help you to become a full-time artist. I was watching an interview on the internet and this interview was with Joe Kentish. I loved how he can bring to us in a very simple way things that usually are so hard to understand about the music industry. This is Joey Kentish. He starts to get a little bit famous inside the music industry since he starts to break several artists. He discovered his artists and he helps his artists to sell more within the label. Which label? Well, he is the head of Warner Music. And his last huge discover was Dua Lipa. With Dua Lipa, he helped her to have 60 million monthly listeners in just five years and 7.5 billion streams. To start, I want to explain what he does. He's the head of ENR. ENR stands for Artist and Repertoire. It means that it's a part inside the label that looks for new artists, work this artist, work the songs that this artist have, so the final product is perfect for the label to distribute and produce. There was, was always an easier proposition than most because she has such a clear idea of what she liked and just as importantly what she didn't like. I kept on going into studio sessions going, I want to make a song that sounds a bit like J. Cole, Mix and Nelly Furtado. Try and like merge the two together to have this like hip hop influenced pop. In order to do that, actually, they needed to find artists that are prepared for this agreement. People talk a lot about the agreements with these major labels, but they don't say a lot of what these people need to do before. And he talks a lot about it and makes super clear that labels are interested in highlight and grow the work that the artist is already doing. I look at you and I think that all the resources that my company has at its disposal will dovetail with what you're doing and make it bigger because artists can release music themselves. So I need to look at you and think that what we do plus what you do could be bigger. We'll be adding value to your business. Otherwise, really, you should be doing it yourself or you should be doing it with someone else. When signing up with a major label, the label will give a structure and promotion to the artist. And in return, the artist needs to give the songs and the engagement with the audience. I think maybe the biggest change now, though, is productivity. I don't think, I think it's a lot harder to be the secretive genius up in your attic who doesn't promote themselves and is mysterious and is behind some sort of veil or curtain and is coming up with 12 pieces of music every three years to put out as an album, 12, 12 records to put out as an album every three years. It's a romantic ideal and I love the idea of it. And you might get to that point in your career and it might work for some people, but in this marketplace, um, it's really difficult to be that. It's part of the artist's work, not just deliver the product, like the songs, but also deliver the connection with the clients, with the fans. It is really important that the artist understand that, that he will not build connection with fans after the contract, but he will just have the contract if he already have connection with the fans and if he already knows how to do that in regular basis in a way that this is growing over time. So when the major label come to this artist and decide to sign with him, they can expand this work. Major labels don't want to build an artist. They want to discover and invest in an artist to after we have profits, 
these profits can be shared between artists and label. If these artists have no audience or have no structure, there is no way for this big label put money and investments in this business that is not there yet. They will not build the business for you. In my opinion, that's the most important part of the interview because he shows how important it is for the artist to have this connection with the audience. This connection is what will make these artists grow. He calls it productivity. So they need to, to have that level of productivity and, 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 and a way of engaging their audience. So not just productivity in terms of music, but productivity in terms of talking to their audience, having a language and a, and a dialogue with their audience that mm. they can maintain on their own, which takes energy. Joe also says that it's so important, this engagement with the audience, that sometimes this is more important than the songs itself. And there is any different ways to do it right now. And the artist should explore this as much as he or she can. <laughs> It's not just be on social media, but also be present in the shows with the audience or maybe has a newsletter or maybe go to events. It doesn't matter if it's online or if it's offline, but it needs to be part of the artist's work. It can be, every, every, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. and, and we speak to some artists who are quite reticent about really engaging in social media heavily and I completely get that I think if you're a young person not thinking really carefully about how much you engage in social media whether you're a musician or not um, you're probably making a mistake or you're making unconscious decisions which are having a big effect on what and who you are mm -hmm. so we get that with artists they're like oh, I'm not sure about this and that and and and, and that's absolutely fine for me talking and engaging with your audience doesn't mean you need to post 10 selfies a day. It's just finding a way to have this dialogue with them. And, and it might just be through pictures of the environment you're in, pictures of things you care about, um, reposting stuff that you care about, doing short clips of songs that you really like. It could be anything. But I do think that when people find a record that they like and someone's saying something that they like, they want and expect to dive in a little bit deeper to, to that artist and kind of get to know their world a little bit. And it's for the artist to work out how they do that. And it's not to say we won't engage with people who don't have that all straight away set up, because most people don't, but it's something we need to get into. How are we going to do that? Well, we have any different ways. And this will always be different based on your personality, based on your age, based on the culture of the place that you live. It's interesting. It's funny you said something that we hear everyone in the industry say, and we say this as well. Uh, artists ask, what specifically can I post on social media? And you've mentioned that it's what you're about. It's kind of your your narrative. And then we get comments on our YouTube channel saying, yeah, but what specifically so can I post? And it's like, I don't know because yeah. you've got to figure out who you are, what you're about, what your your brand is, and then go from there. And there is no right or wrong here. If you were making this connection, this is right. It's not how you do that, but if you can do it. And it will vary a lot from artist to artist. Every artist has a message. What are you about? Like, what? What story are you telling? The artist's message is what define the whole endeavor. It's what define what the art is all about, what these artists stand for, what type of connections these artists can do. The artists need to have this message. Um, well, I think that's what art is all about, experimenting, but um, it is an expression it is my artistic expression, and for me, a video is the filmic expression of the song, you know, a visual that describes what the song is about. And you've got to listen to the words of the song, you know, it's about a woman 
who's talking to her lover and she's saying, tell me your dreams, am I in them? Tell me your fears, are you scared? Tell me your stories, I'm not afraid of who you are. And so, you know, we're dealing with sexual fantasies, we're fantasies and being truthful and honest with our partner, you know, and these feelings exist and I'm just dealing with the truth here in my video. The work can be beautiful but without anything that can connect with. And without this connection, there is no audience. And without an audience, the artist doesn't exist. Back or now or maybe in the future, <laughs> agents, producers or any type of middle person in art always try to find artists that already have an audience. This audience proves that this artist was already accepted by someone. It means that this work that this artist is doing has already people that want to have this piece of art. You are approved by other people that your work is good and your message is unique. Because it was already approved by an audience, you know that there is a possibility to have more audience. If you don't have this audience around you, it shows that you are still building people in line for your concert or uh, lots of plays on Spotify or maybe lots of people following you on social media. All these things are indicators that your work is being recognized, that your audience is growing. Those are the main things that a label or any other middle person in the market will take a look. They will see these things and decide if your audience is good enough or broad enough that can be expanded. When you are signed with a label, actually you are going to the level up. It means that your structure needs to be really solid. You need to be really solid in your message, in your audience, in your whole structure on how you produce and deliver your product. Before, think about a label. They will just make this deal with you to help when you are already doing something right. We were always looking for artists with audience. You know, like we were always, you know, I would prefer to walk into a gig with 200 kids inside, 100 kids waiting to, to, to get in outside and then know all the words, you know, and that's maybe what would have happened 10, 15 years ago. That's what you would have seen if you were going to try and sign the Arctic Monkeys when things were getting really crazy. You'd have walked into a gig, 100 kids outside, all in the, all knew all of the words. They'd have the, the badges or the, the t-shirts, whatever. They, and, and that's the equivalent of whatever, 50,000 Instagram followers, or that's the same thing. We were always looking for audience. We just, it was harder for people to build an audience and it was harder for us to see the audience. It's not just that that will say if you can or if you cannot be signed under this contract. But audience doesn't equal, for me, audience doesn't equal that you should be signed to a record deal. Joe is really incisive when he says that the label needs to amplify the work that the musicians are ready to win. They need to understand if they can do that. The audience is one of the indicators that will say if they can or not amplify the work of the artist. But also, is the personality of this artist aligned with the personality of the label? For example, if I have a rock and roll label, I'm not signing an artist that plays another thing. Also, how niched is the audience for this musician? Because sometimes it's so niched that it is hard to amplify. This artist is already serving the audience that it's possible to serve. So the label cannot help to amplify, you know? You might be doing something and have like a really great small engaged fan base. And I personally, because it is all my personal opinion might think I don't know how much bigger we can make that I think that that audience I don't necessarily see the areas we're going to put your music which is going to grow your fan base exponentially mm -hmm. so I have to make a kind of decision on on that yeah or I might go to your gig and think you know what with a little bit of focus on the a and R we've given you a bit of access to um to some more people or to, to some more um, equipment or whatever it is. I think we can elevate your music, which is going to mean it can sit in, it can be a bit broader. <clears throat> I think we can help you make bigger videos. I think we can, there's things that I see, we can take your music to radio in a much more sort of forceful way. 
and I think radio will, will, will pick up on it and so let's go with that. Labels are looking for people all the time. They need to have new contracts all the time. They need to have new products to offer to their audience. So that's why people from E and R are always looking for new names. It means that there's a lot of opportunity out there. But how they do this research? As me and you, they start with internet. They go to social media, they go to Spotify, they go to these major places where we talk about music, where we share our music and where this connection between audience and artist can happen. But they also, well, they also listen to other people like me and him. We find artists the same way everyone else finds artists. Our friends tell us about, I guess we have a professional network on top of our mm. friends network as well. So you might have a friend of yours who kind of knows that you're in the music biz and be like, have you checked out this out? I was listening to it all holiday. What is this song? Blah, blah, blah. And you, you get into it that way. So, so, so we've got a bigger network of professional sort of uh, contacts that will do that with us for professional reasons. Instagram, you know, Twitter, everywhere, everywhere everyone else does. In this research, he will understand the audience, he will understand the personality of this artist, he will understand what's the message that his artist has, and, well, what this artist is all about. If this is already a strong work and is aligned with what the label wants, then they can marry and have this amazing contract. If not, then it's not a very good investment for the label. So it doesn't happen. Well, music business is a business before anything else. They want to invest and have something in return. And they also want to have lower risks on doing that. They don't want to be wondering if these artists with this money will or not succeed. They just go on the ones that they believe that can succeed. When we have this in mind, we can understand that Joe needs to be super crystal clear about the artist that he is signing on. He started his research on the internet, but if this is an interesting artist, the next step is to go to this concert. But if you are an artist that didn't pass through this beginning and is trying to attract some people to watch your shows so they can sign you on, I need to tell you that these people will just go there if they are already like 80% sure that you are a good investment. Why? Well, they need to spend time going there, they need to spend transportation going there, they need to spend tickets sometimes to go watch the show. He will not leave his workstation, make the company pay lots of money for him to go to a concert, to when he come back say, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Or worse, sign with someone that he doesn't know if it's already prepared and then they discover that it's not. So when you are trying to attract a label to make a deal with you, you need to prove to them that you are lower risk. It means that if they put money on you, you can prove that they can have money back. You need to show that what you're doing, it's already working. So if you have more money, you can work better. You need to show them that all the music that you're doing has a response from the market. You are putting a product that is selling and then you're already having something back. Maybe you don't have a huge profits. Maybe you cannot be already a full-time artist, but if you are doing this work and people are buying, you already have something in your hands to show to a label that you were profitable and that they will have no much risk investing on you. In the beginning, artists need to be crystal clear about who they are, what they offer, and for whom they are offering that. If you have these things organized, then you start to work your products and work your structures. If you don't have these three things yet on your mind, you need to figure out and you need to build this structure for yourself. So when you discover what is your about, 
you need to have your message and you will repeat this message over and over and over and over and over again, attracting more and more eyeballs to your work. Everyone that likes what you're doing will start to get closer to you. And the more people that you have closer to you, you are building a community. This community will be your fan base. This community will be the most important thing to support your business. It means that in the beginning, the artist needs to work by themselves. You cannot find out who you are asking for another person. You cannot figure out what's your message asking for someone else. This is an internal work. However, when you already have this part figured out, the next step is to grow, to attract more and more and more people. And to do that, you need help. What the label does is pick someone that already have everything figured out about themselves. They are already making a very good work, however, needs help to grow, to expand, to attract more people. It's someone that already have everything already done that if I can put on the radio, on the TV, on the um, YouTube or whatever, this person will convert these people into clients. It means that if in the first stage you need to spend a lot of time by yourself, in the second stage you need to develop network. That will be the most important thing. If you know people, you can bond with these people and you can maximize the work that you're doing right now. What is really important is to understand where you are. And that's my take out from this video. Know if you were in the beginning and you need to work by yourself in your fundamental structures and essence of your work. Or if you are already structured in this and need to level up, so you need to work with other people to attract more eyeballs to that work that you already built before. Know your artwork better than anyone else. And the most easy way to do that is when you explain your work. Try to explain your work for someone else. Try to explain what you do. And when you say that, it's not just, oh, I play rock and roll or I draw portraits. No, explain like why you are different from the others, why your artwork is unique, why this person, when asked what you do, they want to know what you do, not what every other artist does. If you have some questions, put here in the comment section below, but maybe I can help you a little bit better, right? I have a free ebook in my website that will help you step by step. So you can go here in the description of this video so you can click there. See you, thank you so much for keeping doing art.